As we look around in our schools, malls, parks, or even in our own families, we see a great diversity of people with different traits. But, have you ever wondered how such a diversity in the human species came about? What makes the human species so different from the birds, squirrels, or even your own pets? Knowing a person's age, gender, athletic ability, or even physical appearance or religion may not be enough to determine who a person truly is, because a lot of information would still be missing. There are many other factors that influence who we are. However, let's see how scientists answer this question. Hi, my name is Jess, and I'm Tiff, and for many, many years, scientists like us have been studying and examining thousands and thousands of cells to determine the genetic makeup of who we are. Let's take a look at what other scientists and us have been studying about our genes for the past hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of years. Each cell in your body is composed of 46 chromosomes, which are composed of hundreds and thousands of genes that are made up of deoxyribonucleic acid, aka DNA. This DNA contains information about your heredity, which are the traits you've inherited from your parents or generations before. Let's take a look at the DNA structure over there. A DNA molecule is made up of a phosphate molecule, a deoxy sugar, ribose sugar, and a pair of nitrogenous bases connected by hydrogen bonds. These nitrogenous bases are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine must always bond with thymine, while cytosine must always bond with guanine. These are called complementary base pairs. When a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base bond, scientists call these nucleotides. When a chain of nucleotides form with another chain of nucleotides, they twist and form into a DNA double helix structure. Since humans are made up of so many double helix DNA structures that contain so much information about who we are, curious scientists like us decided to decode and sequence all the three billion base pairs in our bodies and create a detailed map of the human chromosomes, which together is called the human genome. Scientists from six countries, the US, United Kingdom, China, Japan, France, and Germany officially began this project in 1990 and called it the Human Genome Project. So what are the goals of the project? Well, the first goal was to identify all the 20,000 to 25,000 approximate genes in the human DNA. The second goal was to determine the sequences of the 3 billion chemical base pairs 
that make up the human DNA. The third goal was to actually store this information into databases. Long time ago, scientists had to map out each DNA sequence by hand. But it wasn't easy because mapping out all the 3 billion base pairs one by one was difficult and frustrating, just like solving a Rubik's Cube. As technology advanced, although scientists predicted the project would take 15 years to complete, it was actually completed within 13 years. A machine was invented that could decode thousands of DNA strands at a remarkable speed. Although this technology advanced for sequencing DNA faster, there were two rules that scientists must follow when sequencing. Number one, DNA must be cut into sections because it is too long for scientists to manage. So chemical DNA scissors, like these, called restricted enzymes, react with DNA to break it down at specific sequences, like this. And there you go. Number two. After DNA was separated and cut into separate fragments with DNA scissors, they must be separated and arranged into different groups of identical fragments. Scientists use the, the method of gel electrophoresis. In gel electrophoresis, a mix of fragments is located at one end of the gel. They are electrically charged. And when a current is applied, when a current is applied, they tend to move through the gel and separate into larger fragments and smaller fragments. The larger ones tend to travel through the gel slower than the smaller fragments. So it collects at the top and the smaller ones collect at the bottom. What are the benefits of this project? Well, through this project, not only will we be able to determine our genetic map in great detail, but scientists can also use this information to de develop treatments for genetic diseases. Also, it may help discover how genes influence memory, intelligence, and behavior. Mmm, McDonald's! Wait! You can't enter McDonald's Why? Day! Because your genetic report shows that you can't consume any more fatty foods. But I want fries! I'm sorry, this is what your genetic report says. You can't go into McDonald's today. Crazy run, coach. I think I checked your genetic code earlier today, and you should be on a vegetarian diet. A vegetarian diet? Yeah, in order to prepare for next week's competition. But I want steak. Well, that's too bad. Hi, we're here for an interview. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm Tiff. Hi, Tiff. I'm Jess. Hi, Jess. Sit down. Um, here's our resumes. Oh, thank you. Now let me just look up your genetic report. Oh, Jess, welcome to the fat <gasps> company. Thank you. How about me? Oh, I'm sorry, Tiv. Your um, genetic report says that you have a genetic disease and uh, Jess will be a much more valuable asset to our company. Yes. <coughs> what do these situations really happen? The question is, who would have the right to own our genetic information? Would there be genetic discrimination? What, what will the future, future bring? bring?
billion base pairs in our bodies. Kind of forgot. <laughs> and I coughed in the beginning. Of the day. Through this project, not only will we be able to determine our genetic map in great detail. Uh, I dropped the map. 